My job here is to convince you that the uh, immune system is making major decisions and it's possible to uh, somehow uh, focus on these uh, decisions and uh, to have uh, some uh, treatment possibilities. I uh, took this as the first slide to uh, point the importance of uh, today's uh, meeting and because chronic airway diseases are a major health uh, issue and uh, WHO indicates that they are one of the four uh, world's major health problems in addition uh, to cardiovascular diseases, diabetes and cancer. So these uh, chronic non-communicable diseases are the leading cause of mortality in the world. And today, there is 235 million people who have asthma and 64 million people who have chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases and in the range of 600 million to 1 billion allergic rhinitis is also out there. And we are forecasting that if the world population reaches to uh, 10 billion, there will be around 4 billion allergic individuals who are affected, uh, and this will be a huge catastrophe if you think of the number and the burden, which will increase by uh, four times in around 2050s. So uh, we have uh, allergic diseases mainly caused because of uh, immune tolerance defect, and this can be corrected uh, by allergen-specific immunotherapy. And uh, we are working on the immune system. And uh, to describe the immune system is very important to understand the uh, future plans, because immune system is very decisive, except sudden death. Immune system is sending signals in all diseases. It has a very interactive networking, which makes decisions and uh, receives all input from all tissues, infections, commensal bacteria, and almost any environmental agents. So these decisions are very, very important because the immune system had somehow confused uh, itself uh, since 1950s by receiving so many wrong signals uh, from the environment. And uh, these decisions somehow moved into a direction of developing uh, chronic diseases and respiratory diseases are increasing mainly for these reasons. One of the first things I'll focus is immune tolerance defect. Normally, we have to tolerate all the, all the allergens in our environment, but this doesn't happen. The immune system somehow realizes that uh, these allergens are becoming some kind of a danger to the body, and uh, uh, they have to be uh, somehow treated with an inflammation. And this is the reason why we are developing IgE-type antibodies, why we are developing inflammatory response to allergens. And this can be corrected with allergen-specific immunotherapy and can be prevented uh, by early intervention. So when we have the pollen season, uh, this normally should not make any disease and this should not uh, cause any uh, trouble. And uh, about uh, 100 years ago, it wasn't a huge trouble. But since 1950s, this is uh, very significantly increasing. And about 50% of European population are developing now Ig antibodies to these pollens. The second important point I want to focus is epithelial barrier defect. With the change in the environment, we are now uh, experiencing a new uh, change in uh, our tissues. So when we look at our epithelial cells in our skin or in the mucosa, we have very tight barrier. These are two adjacent epithelial cells, and this barrier is so tight in normal cases. But in allergic individuals, we can see that this barrier opens, and it is really uh, giving a huge distance in between so that all the toxins, pollutants, pollens uh, can go inside the tissues, can go deeper in the tissues, and uh, then can cause inflammation. And uh, this uh, is a, a video you can see here uh, how we see the patients in the polyclinic. This is a, a very interesting video. When you look at the two uh, barrier molecules on the sides of epithelial cells, there is a distance in the range of three to five micrometers, and uh, all the toxins can go in. This video is very interesting. It is like uh, the Star Wars, Luke Skywalker goes in and then flies out. So uh, this barrier is now... Uh, Fully open. If you want to understand the barrier, you have to think of the disease cholera. For example, in cholera, toxins uh, bind to these barrier molecules and open the barrier. And within hours, liters of water can pass through, and this makes the cholerogenic diarrhea. Now we are having this in our lungs, in our nose, and this barrier is very open. And if we take, for example, the rinsing fluid 
of a laundry machine, rinsing fluid of a washing machine. The remaining detergents in this fluid is opening this barrier very significantly, which was published in our journal in a few uh, months ago. So uh, this problem is uh, uh, really something to be tackled, and the immune system also controls uh, this barrier. And I would like to uh, finish with uh, focusing and uh, telling, giving you two major messages. The first message is uh, to induce immune tolerance. It uh, will be the early intervention, and it will be a uh, very early start of induction of immune tolerance is very, very important uh, against allergens. The second one is uh, treat defective uh, epithelial barrier, provide environmental control, uh, and uh, control all the environment that opens the barrier, which is a huge also epidemic problem now. And uh, early intervention for this is also very, very important. And since we are in European Parliament, we have to really focus on uh, research. Research is uh, the only way that uh, Europe has the strength against the rest of the world. I, and art and science are the two major things. And we are still working in European uh, grants, which have only 1.5% uh, chance this also should be strongly tackled and strongly uh, uh, focused that uh, we have really good research funding in Europe and uh, to focus in this research to uh, change the world in the best way. Thank you.